at that, right? It's very strong here, but then it fades out here and then it catches back up. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Is It Worth It? Where I go around the world and the internet looking for art supplies to make your life just a little bit easier or for you to enjoy the craft just this much more. Now, I know that in every episode I tell you that if you have any supplies that you want me to review, just drop it in the comments below. And finally, someone has asked me to do something and they asked me to review Prismacolor markers. So I went ahead and picked up a pack of Prismacolor markers because I want to review them because someone asked me to. Now, I've used Prisma before, so I kind of I have a preconceived notion of how the, the Prismacolor markers are, but it has been a very, very long time since I've used them, so I'm very excited to see just how much they have grown and changed over time and to see if they are actually worth it because Prismacolor markers are not cheap. So I wanna make sure to see if they're actually worth it. And you all know there's only one way to do that. Come on. Let's go check them out. Oh, right. So Prismacolor is going with the chipboard. And they give you a little illustration, which I always like. I, I love the fact when they put illustrations on the actual chipboard so that you can actually see what you could uh, potentially complete with it. So that's really nice. They give you an indication of what it is. And this is interesting to me because it's brush and bullet. Normally you get some type of chisel, but this is giving you a brush and bullet, which I think is kind of different because what I remember from Prisma is that it was brush or chisel or bullet and chisel. So this was, I mean, this was a standard pack at the store. I picked it up and it was brush and bullet. So interesting, very interesting um, in the back and see they added something different. I like this that they added just another layer, just another illustration for you to be like, hey, look, you could be able to, to do this. And then it tells me that I have primary and secondary colors. It kind of gives me an idea of what the brushes can do. And it's created for professionals and artists that love the control and flexibility of a brush. Create thick, thin, and varied lines with a brush tip. Use a fine tip for details. Advanced ink formulations provide rich color, saturation, and superior blendability. Single ink reservoir for a perfect color match end to end. Alcohol dye based ink. So a single ink reservoir. So that means that these are not refillable, which is a really big, like knock in the nah, this isn't worth it kind of uh, area because they're not refillable and yet they are still very expensive. So, but with that said, let's go ahead and check it out and see what see here and I really should start using scissors for these <laughs> security stickers man those are those are no joke all right so no tray just box okay so we have a you know everything's black which is kind of seeming to be the standard as far as what color people want to use for their markers. And <clears throat> marker itself is a nice size with the actual paper going across. You can't really feel any of the plastic, but if I touch the, the ends, it, you can tell that it is a higher quality plastic. It doesn't necessarily feel like it is plastic, right? So it's got a nice smooth texture. Um, and so that's really nice. I do enjoy this. It's probably the first time that I've ever seen, like here's a brush stroke and that's for the brush tip. And then here's a straight line and that's the, the detailed, or at least I hope that's what's gonna happen. Yep, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so I think that that's a nice indicator, right? So that you can actually see what, what tip you're gonna get before you even get started. So that's nice tells you the color, the actual code that breaks it down. And then, you know, even, nope, that doesn't, okay. It just tells you the color, right? And it has a little stopper, so it's round, but it has a little stopper to try and help prevent it from 
rolling away from you. So it's pretty good. So, I mean, if you really chuck it, then obviously it's gonna take a lot more time before it stops, but it actually has a nice stopper on it to help prevent it from rolling away. So that's nice. All right, so the bullet looks like a standard bullet. You know, there's nothing, nothing too different about that. It's not really, it's not too big, it's not too small, so that's really nice. It seems pretty saturated in there, so the ink flow should be really nice. Let's see if the posts it does, and it is a snug fit. Oh, wow, did you hear that? Oh, man, it's on there so tight, it pulls the other one off. So, so, I mean, you don't have to put it on there as tight as I did, but, you know, because it's, it's a nice fit, so it's not going to fall off. If you hit it, it's not really coming off, but you can really push it in there, and then it's on there so tight that it's it'll take off the other one, then you just have to hold the cap. So, so that's good. The post is really good. The snap, it's a little soft snap, but the connection, it might not make a lot of noise, but it is definitely very snug in there, so that's good. The brush is a, a thicker brush, right? So it should be able to give you a lot more coverage with the with each mark, but it also has a nice tip, so it should be able to give you some nice fine lines as well. All right, these over as usual. Bristol board 300 series, smooth. Okay, down. Okay. You know what? Now we'll just take it off. There we go. <clears throat> All right. So normally, I always start with the light colors. So let's start on the opposite side. Start with this. We're gonna start with the brush. Yeah, see. <laughs> I was like, yep, just like I remember. <laughs> um, so the brush itself is actually really soft. So you can see how it's constantly making thicker lines. So it's a nice, it's a nice brush for trying to get textures out of it. Like not textures, but a variation of line. Um, but it kind of, right, you got to really have a good understanding of how to hold the brush and what pressure to get nice and thin lines. But as you can see, when you put it down, sometimes it just, it lets off a lot of ink. And you know, that's normal, depends on how you hold it and how you push it down. But the thing that really is a problem for me is how, look at that, right? It's very strong here but then it fades out here and then it catches back up, which uh, lets me see that the ink flow is not as consistent as it could be or should be for that matter. Ooh, and you hear it. Oh, I don't like that. Right, like when you go over to try and make a nice little blend, you can hear it. You can hear the brush on the paper. Yeah, it's not necessarily something I like. Like it squeaks. I don't want squeaking markers. But once you do cover it, like once you actually get a nice coverage, it it's nice. It's a very nice, um, consistent co coverage. But if you're making these lines, it does not. It's dark here and it's light there and then it gets dark and light and dark. So it's like adding its own kind of color variation into your line, even though you didn't ask it to. The, <clears throat> the bullet is a it's not it's a, a hard bullet which is nice right so it's really good for bringing in those nice little details that the bullet seems to be staying very very consistent and that's normally what i did anyway when i used to use prismacolor markers i had the bullet and the chisel because the bullet stayed consistent and seems like has very superior art uh, ink flow in comparison to the brush and then with the chisel, I'm able to cover bigger areas and make sure that it gets that. But this brush is, the brush is kind of lacking for me. Let's see if that's consistent though. Yep. Well, maybe it was just the green. This is a nice purple. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie, that's a really nice purple. Eh, I mean, I can see the flip. No, I guess it was, maybe it was just the green. But see, that's what I remember. But even here, 
here and here, right? It's still, it's less, but it's still fading out. Like it does, it's not consistent all the way through. Now I understand when you're flicking it like this, like because you're lifting off and the pressure is lifting off. Like I get that as to why that wouldn't work, you know, staying consistent. But when you have the brush just on the paper the entire time, it's fading in different areas. Not, not a big fan of that. But the one thing that's super consistent is that bullet. Right, see, that just stays consistent. Try this pink. Yeah, so with the brush, it's kind of the same thing throughout. If you're, if you're making like swoopy lines, <laughs> it's gonna give you a different color variation. And then like I said, if you're trying to cover an area it's gonna take you a little bit and it squeaks at you, which I, I don't like. But it is, you know, as indicated with the green and this pink, it is, once you get it there, it's very nice. And then, you know, the chisel, I mean, look at that, right? So if you're, you're using the chisel, it seems to work just fantastic because even if you, if you go slow, or if you go fast, that ink is flowing the entire time. So that's that's really nice. I do believe that the biggest issue is gonna be this brush. And the orange isn't that bad. But it does, I mean, it does. It does kind of give a little bit of variation. The orange is actually pretty good. Every other one kind of gave you that variation, but so it seems like per per marker and the actual concoction of ink and um, the acetone, my goodness, <laughs> is different. And so, like this, like this one actually seems to be working just fine. But all the other ones would fade out. And I'm yeah here. Psh, psh. Yeah, so it's, I mean, I think we had one outlier, <laughs> which is that orange, right? This, or this kind of dark reddish orange is actually like, oh, I'm different. Cause all the other ones, no matter what, when you, when you use the, it just changes. Yeah, there's light, then there's dark, there's light, then there's dark. Um, but in every single one of these, that chisel, it flows like no one's business. So I highly recommend the chisel point part of it. That seems to be working the best. Right? Whoa. Ugh. This one just <laughs> This one's like, I don't like you at all. See, and then when you try and do something that you would think you would be able to do with a brush, right? Something swoopy and stuff like that. Look at that. Bam, bam, bam. You know, it's just all these different just ink flow issues. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the brush. But, right, like clockwork, that, that chisel works just fine. Absolutely fine. But yeah, see, every every single time, right? Dark fades into light. And as soon as you come back up, light, dark, light, blop of ink, light. So that is definitely something you would have to keep in mind because that that inconsistency would drive me crazy. But I firmly believe that because the chisel is this way and it is consistent and goes all the way through, I mean the bullet, that the chisel, as I remember it, would do the exact same thing. So. Ah. 
<laughs> Layer orange. Yeah, the colors they have are some really big sh jump shifts. take a little bit to dry but we're just trying to blend some of it and see what happens now with that while we're waiting for that we'll do our little test a little bit more space here Stedla Tombow Barb Castell and King Art. Okay. I'll definitely go over it with yellow, because that's... Oof. Orange. Do blue. Super dark. That's not really helpful. I barely see it. I'll take this green. Also super dark. All right. <clears throat> so. Prismacolor, the lighter colors, right? Because the dark ones generally don't have an issue, but the lighter colors that we did have definitely does not like uh, Stedla ink or the Farber Castell in the yellow. That really bled a lot. But the Tombow and the King Art is actually holding up just fine with your Prismacolor markers. I know that Micron did really well with Prismacolor as well. But as you can see, I do think I remember on all these lighter colors that it loved to pull up some of the ink. So you just want to keep that in mind. But with Tombow and King Art, it just doesn't seem like it's pulling up anything. So therefore, you know, might be able to, to be able to do that. Um, as we are looking at the blend as it's starting to dry. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think the color jumps are too much, and I know they have a ton of colors, so they they would be able to really make this blend, and that's the thing when it comes to blending, right? You can't, you don't want to have gigantic shifts in your color because it'll be too far apart, but I do believe, like, once it starts to, once, like, the yellow is starting to dry, right, and we got a nice little blend going on here, and this one's kind of getting there as well. But I think that the, the, the colors that were in the pack make it just a little bit too, too far of a jump to make a nice, nice blend. All right, so we just got done reviewing the Prismacolor dual tip brush and chisel um, alcohol-based markers. And eh, I mean, eh. I am not a big fan of this brush at all. Like the ink flow of this was not anywhere where it should be. Uh, the, the fact that it would go from like light to dark to light to dark, even though I wasn't doing it, like if that was an effect that I wanted to get, then great. But considering that that's not what I wanted, I had the same kind of amount of pressure going on through the whole thing and it would decide to not give me enough ink or to blotch out a bunch of ink when the brush kind of looped around because it's a really soft brush. So I think that once we did the loop, what happened is there was more pressure on the brush. So it blew out a little bit more ink. And that's why we had those blobs of color. 
but you know there are other markers out there that have a, a more firm brush and so it it doesn't do that <laughs> so I don't know I don't I don't I don't necessarily think that the brush version of the Prismacolor markers are actually worth it the the bullet point on there was fantastic right like ink flow was great drawing slow drawing fast it was nice and firm um, it didn't beat up at the beginning so the bullet was actually really good and it can only lead me to believe that the chisel will also be as good because it's kind of the same idea right it's one one standard non-moving uh, nib and therefore you can get the same kind of consistency all the way through and so if you are planning on getting some Prismacolor markers, I would highly recommend getting the chisel and the bullet tip. The brush was just not my thing, and for this at least, and I've found other markers that have a better brush and distributes ink way better and stuff like that. So I would highly recommend you guys looking at some of those other reviews that I've done that cover a brush marker, because this this isn't it, not for the money, and it's not refillable. No, there are way better options out there. Well, that wraps up today's episode of Is It Worth It? I hope that you were able to get some type of information that'll help you out in the future. If you have any suggestions for materials that you'd like me to review, please go ahead and drop it in the comments below and I will add it to the list. As you can see, this, this right here was a recommendation from one of you. And as soon as we got it, I went and got it in the store and put it on the list to go down as we you know, continue to make it. So like I said, if you have any suggestions, put it in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and the bell so that you get notified every single time that I drop new content. Thank you all so very much, and I will see you at the next episode.